The Ultimate Transformation. Today, we are going to start to discuss a new story for humanity. How do we, a new story for you and a new story for humanity? We're going to touch on some of the concepts in The Ultimate Secret, uh, the greatest insight of our generation. What that book goes into is it creates a whole new context for who you are and your new story, as well as I'm going to use a big word called intersubjective, the story of humanity. We said transformation is distinct from change. Change shows up as difficult, takes a lot of time, is unpredictable, and you have to keep the problem present to work on it. And when you focus on the problem, what happens when you focus on something, it grows. What we want is, is we want a whole new, higher, more appropriate level of thinking. That's called a transformation. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, change won't work anymore. We're in the age of transformation. You have to consider this concept of transformation and institute it in your life just to keep up. In the previous lesson, what we discussed was is how things are so dramatically better, that this is a fundamentally new, advanced, better era for humanity. And how do, we, how do we develop this mindset that's going to move us through the next hundred or a thousand years? And that's what, it's, that's what this is about, humanity upgrade and expansion mindset. And we are moving through this quickly. I want to talk about how we develop our story and what makes human beings unique in, in the, on planet Earth. We are the only... Um, animal species that have what they call subjective stories. And there's two types of stories. There's number one, the objective. And what objective means is like, those are the facts and figures that come from science. Like you're, you're five foot three, you weigh 115 pounds. That's objective data. Subjective story would be um, six foot tall, 300 pounds and a fat slob. No, you're just six feet tall, 300 pounds. That is the objective data. Let's say this chimpanzee is really hungry and off in the distance he sees some ripe bananas on the top of a tree. Well, on this fateful day, he looks to the right and he sees a leopard. Now, a leopard is the arch en enemy, the nemesis of the chimpanzee. So what the chimpanzee has to do is he has to think. He has to take an accurate assessment of objective reality. How far is he from the tree? How tall is the tree? How fast can he run? And how far away is the leopard? Well, what he does is he takes all that information and then makes an emotional decision. Do I back away? Do I go hungry? Or do I give it all I got and go for it? The chimpanzee does not think, does God want me to do this? Does the high priest chimpanzee going to give me more bananas in heaven if I go to this because he's going to pray to the banana deity? It does. They, they do not have these subjective reasons. Now, let me give you some subjective stories about humanity. My favorite one is, is the credit card. Now, imagine this. Just, it's, it's hard to even imagine. I have a worthless piece Four, four or five gram piece of plastic that I, I keep in my pocket. I can go halfway around the world to somebody in a different country, speaks a different language, different religion, never met him before, and I can give him this, this credit card and he can, he'll give me a dozen bananas. Or he'll give me thousands of dollars worth of goods and services. This is an amazing example of intersubjective cooperation. This intersubjective story is because everybody believes in the credit card. If that belief goes away, that credit card is worthless. The most pervasive story on the planet that everybody agrees on is money. Osama bin Laden didn't, didn't the religion, society, but he loved American dollars. He believed in American dollars. So what if I went to a, a chimpanzee and said, hey, can I, you know, if I give you this credit card, will you give me some bananas? He says, what do you think I am, a human? Let's look at this process of create, this creative process. Now, we go a deep dive into the creative process when we go on the creative process workbook and, um, 
there's actually a chapter in there aptly named the creative process. And what it does is it goes into how there's always three points of creation in any process. So he, here it is for humanity. Here it is for the evolution of humanity. Human beings, unlike any other species, can accumulate knowledge over generations. As a matter of fact, on your, on your cell phone, on, your, on the palm of your hand, you can access all the world's information in a second and disseminate an idea of, with the touch of a screen. And you can access 5,000 years worth of history just on, on the, uh, uh, just on your, in the palm of your hand. This intergenerational accumulated knowledge with an increasing number of innovators is transforming our planet. Now, we take this knowledge and we wrap it around our intersubjective stories. What is the intersubjective story human beings have been in for the last 70,000 years? We already discussed them. Survival and salvation. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to start to move towards a new story. A new story and we're going to create a new reality. For the greater part of humanity, our brains were wired. We lived in this era of survival. We were concerned with survival. And then we migrated to this era of salvation. We need to be saved. And this has affected our story. And what's going on here in, in this modern society now is, is I, I make the case, I'll say it again, we are in fundamentally different times. Everything, the, 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 the stories of the past, famines, plagues, wars, are virtually gone. Those are the things that, that, that killed the most human beings. This was the greatest sorrow and pain caused on humanity. So here's what we got. Accumulating knowledge, intergenerational knowledge, that's point one. Point two is these intersubjective stories. And the thing is, is now we have, we're in this era of transformation, this era of amazing, rising, rapidly rising complexity. Let's bring this in for a landing just so you understand that your, the objective reality, subjective reality, that subjective reality creates our stories. The story that we've been dealing with, the story we're going to eliminate is one of survival and salvation and we're going to move forward with one of thriving and happiness and we're going to continue to to talk about the ultimate transformation <music>